This tutorial is about how to create your own macro and function libraries. So you can add your own custom functions or macros that are available throughout all of your blueprints uh, throughout your project. Uh, and you can also take these libraries and port them to all of your projects so that you can build a tool library that can use anywhere that uh, you're working in any of your projects. Also make them available in shared projects that you're working on so that you can streamline the process and create your own shortcuts for things. So what you want to do is right click in your content browser and go to blueprints and blueprint macro library or blueprint function library depending on which one you want to create. So we're going to go with a blueprint macro library and you want to create the, um, the class, you want to select object. And the reason being is object is the parent class to all other classes. And the way this works is any class which is a child of the class that you're creating it in will have access to that library. So by creating the overall object class, any blueprint you create of any class in the future will have access to the tools that you're going to create. Click Select, and we'll just name it uh, Blueprint Macro Test. And we go in. As you can see, it's a little bit different than your typical blueprint that you would see that you're working on because this specifically only contains macros, nothing else. Now from here, if you want an idea of how a macro is set up, we can simply take a look at one of the macros that exists built into the engine. And this is actually a lesson that I learned the hard way. You can easily change the macros that exist within Unreal Engine. And they will automatically be available to all of your projects that you create within that engine. The problem is, if you are working on a shared project, the other people's engines aren't going to have the altered version of that macro. And that can create all kinds of problems. So although I can like go here, and let's say, for example, we have the uh, increment float macro. This is built into the engine. If you double click on it, it will allow you to go in and see the contents of it and change them, which I did. And it seemed to work just fine. The problem is if you ever work in a shared environment or you reinstall the engine or whatever, this isn't going to be there. And so any uses of this that you use are going to break. So what you can do is you can say, all right, well, um, I want to improve on this macro because the way the increment and decrement macros work is they will increment or decrement a float or an integer by one, always by one. But if, what if I want to increment something by 5? And I do it on, on, a, on a regular basis. It's something I do a lot. Or, or by a different number in each circumstance. But I do a lot of it. You would either have to not use increment and decrement. Or you'd have to use them in a loop. Or you'd have to use them repeatedly or whatever. So what we can do is we can say, okay, well, I want to do this. But I want to be able to increment by any amount. Not just by one. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to grab of the the default macro, and I'm going to go to my macro that I'm creating, let's get rid of that, and I'm going to paste it in, and the way you create your macro is by customizing all the inputs and outputs that the macro are going to use. So first off, we need an execute input, and we need an execute output. Okay. Now, as you can see here, we're also inputting in a value, but it, well, it says value, but it's actually a reference to the, the actual storage area of the value. So not only is it adjusting the value, but it's adjusting the value in the place that is stored in memory so that the change is reflected. It uh, changes the actual contents of the variable, not just the number that is being pulled out of the variable. Now, you, one way you can add variables to an input or an output is you can go over here and you can say, okay, well, I want to add in a variable and I want that variable to be, where are we here? I want it to be, and this, this one is for float. I create a float. But the problem is that's not a reference to, you need a reference, right? And there is no way from this menu to create a reference. But what you can do 
So I'll select this and we'll get rid of this. What you can do is, since you already have a reference to your reference, so to speak, right here, you can just drag it back onto here, and then the variable it creates is a reference to a float. Now, this, uh, as we can see in the original macro, it also gets brought into the addition block. So we also bring it over to the addition block. And then the chain, so this is a duplicate now of, oh, and we need the, the result to come out. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is a duplicate of what it did originally. But we want to change it. We want it to not just add one. We want it to be able to add whatever we want. So all we do is we just pull this pin over to here, let go, and now when you use this instead of, now I've, I've already done this, so uh, I can show you what the end results are going to be. If I go in here, and I've created it, and I've called it increment float improved, instead of, and I'll bring in the regular increment float to show you, this is what the normal one looks like. This is the improved one, where now you have the option of, it'll, it'll by default do plus one. So if you just use it the way the normal increment macro does, It'll work exactly the same. No additional work required. But in the event that you want to increment by a, a value other than 1, you can simply change the value in this field. And because this is in a macro library blueprint of parent class object, this appears in every blueprint. So if I go back to my content browser, and I go to, say, my character blueprint, and open up my character blueprint, and I right click, increment float improved, right alongside the regular increment float. It's available everywhere that I go. Now, to, to finalize these changes, all we need to do is by clicking on the inputs here where you make your changes, you can put in a description, you can put what category you want it to appear in, so I'll show you uh, how I have it set up in, where is it, uh, tools. So the, the, the one that I created before, my macro library, and we go to increment float. As you can see, I have several that I've created here, uh, and they're categorized. And so to do your categories, you just type in, you either select a category if you've already got one created, or you just type in a new one. And the way it works is, as you can see, if you, you have math and then float, math, integer, math, boolean, um, the way you do that is when you're typing it in, you go uh, main category, whatever that is, and then the pipe symbol, which is shift backslash, space, and then your subcategory. As you can see, it creates the hierarchy here. Now I'll change that back to uh, it was math float. Uh, your description goes in here. Any keywords that make it uh, more easily searchable in your search there. Oh, I keep unselecting it. You can change the, the node color and also any shortcut phrases, like for example, with increment and decrement, you do plus, plus, minus, minus. And that creates a, a custom macro. So another one I did, another, it's, it's very, very simple, is to toggle a Boolean. So rather than having to uh, get the Boolean, not the Boolean, set the Boolean, you can just use this macro to just toggle it. And it'll, it does the same thing where you're getting a reference to the variable. So it actually changes the contents of the variable. And it's just a simple matter of set by reference. You drag it back here so that the input is a reference, not just the, the, the contained value, the not, which you then return. Uh, the return isn't necessary. The variable is changed here. The return is added so that if you wanted to do something 
with the altered value, you don't have to do a separate get because it'll just get spit out of the, the macro. So it just makes it a little simpler. And that's it. Once you, you save, your macros are now available throughout your project. And by copying this file, so in this case, my BP macro library, if I copy that file into any other project, then all of the macros that are in that file are now available throughout that project. Okay, so I hope you found this helpful. Have a good one.